Hi everyone, my name is Reema Ravishankar, a student of ISIM, and I'll be taking you through one of the most engaging parts of the summit, the fireside chat. In this session, we will dive into personal stories, insights, and experiences. Think of it as a candid discussion, where you will hear directly from our speakers in a relaxed setting. This is an opportunity to explore topics in depth and hear firsthand the wisdom and experiences that have shaped their journeys. Let's make this an interactive and memorable experience. Without any further delay, let us welcome Mr. Deepak Tulsian. Sir is a distinguished growth consultant specializing in omnichannel jewelry retail. With over 20 years of experience in the jewelry, retail, e-commerce, and consulting sectors, Sir has consulted for more than 400 jewelry businesses and built a 100 crore rupees jewelry business from the ground up. Sir's expertise has enabled thousands of Indian jewelers to export online globally. Recognized by Silicon India Magazine as a top online gifting startup, Sir has held key roles at eBay, Capgemini, and Frost Sullivan. An MBA in finance and marketing, Sir is also an avid reader, writer, and adventurer. The topic for today's discussion is how to sell high-ticket products and services online. Put a, please put a loud round of applause for Mr. Deepak Tulsian. Thank you. Thank you, Shonia. So I'll just uh, begin with what I just learned. I'm grateful for where I am today, and I thank Ashwin, Pooja, and all of you for having me here. <laughs> thank you. Give him a big round of applause, everyone. And we are super grateful, Deepak, to have you with us today. And I'm sure everyone in the audience is looking forward to learn a lot. So our topic, of course, for today is basically to how to sell high ticket products and services online. And uh, this is an important topic and the reason that we actually picked up as one of the topics today for our summit is because most of our services, if we are looking at, this is not something that is basically a need. Image consulting is not a need, mostly a want. And want is where a lot of affluent people, actually people who come from affluent class, high net worth individuals, they are the one looking out for the service. So yes, I thought, why not? A better topic, and who better to have with us today, Deepak? And Deepak, I'm going to right dive into it, OK? And my question to you, basically, is if you can share some of the common challenges, you know, common challenges or common mistakes that people make while selling to individuals who are you know, from a high net worth individuals, and even trying to sell high ticket products or services online. What are the common mistakes people make? Sure. I'll uh, take one minute to explain the story of why I got into selling high ticket sure. products. <laughs> and then I'll answer your question Absolutely. on mistakes and challenges. So it was back in 2010. I was head of strategy in one of the largest uh, jewelry company in India. And as part of my role, I was evaluating different businesses, how they're performing. So there came the e-commerce business. It was a one or two member team. They happened to have a website, which was e-commerce enabled, not much of marketing. But uh, the sales was not very high, two lakh rupee a month. So while looking into it, the past data of one year, I found there was one sale of 1,80,000, a diamond necklace which was sold. To a city which was unknown to me in Orissa, some remote place, when I figured out with the team, they actually could not find a courier agency which can deliver to that location. <laughs> so that was the state. And I got a moment uh, of thought that there is a potential of e-commerce which can help you sell products to areas where physically you may never dream to be there. So that was my moment where I thought, you know, I'll switch hats from strategy to actually doing e-commerce. That was the moment I got into e-commerce and selling. In about three years' time, we made that business a 36 crore business wow. uh, from 2 lakh a month. Wow. So, uh, so I, I would quote Jeb Bezos, the king of e-commerce. What he says is, it's hard to find things that won't sell online. Right. So if you want to sell online, high ticket, small ticket, I think this is a way to sell. And I will share now you know, some of the learnings that I made uh, mistakes myself. And I'm seeing now 450 plus jewelers that I've consulted to sell you know, jewelry online and offline both, which I teach now. So one of the mistake is, you know, start with advertising to sell high ticket product. OK. 
okay because uh, advertising will get you attention you can buy attention but you cannot buy trust hmm. see when you are saying high ticket and online there are two elements very intrinsic to online and high ticket hmm. see if i ask when we talk about e-commerce what is most important can anyone uh, guess what is most important when you are selling online or in e-commerce audience trust very good guess so trust is the fundamental for buying online uh, the reason you cannot touch and feel the product and you have to pay up front in a physical uh, store we actually assess the product try it and we actually take position of the product and then make the payment at the billing counter right but here you are making up front payment without touching the product so trust is fundamental ads cannot build trust it can build awareness you can reach more people with ads it can, it can amplify what is good in you but it cannot fundamentally help you build trust so that's one mistake whenever you start do not start with advertising so now coming to the second uh, element in uh, we are talking a selling e-commerce or online and selling high ticket product now what is fundamental uh, you know barrier to selling high ticket product you yourself would have been customers of buying high ticket products hmm. what comes as a number one barrier of buying something high ticket whether online or offline anyone can guess what is the fundamental barrier why people you know hesitate to buy something very expensive what stops them from buying very expensive is it worth it some risk right hmm. you anticipate what if i go wrong yeah. the stakes are high hmm. it's not a small ticket product you may still buy right so this is second uh, element risk so if you can just figure out two things if you want to sell high ticket product online first is how to build trust right you will be able to and second how to eliminate risk correct if you can mitigate risk take away risk that's why in jewelry uh, you know i had clients who were able to sell 42 lakh rupee worth of necklace setting in chennai one single store client is in us never visited the store wow so there are several case studies lot of designers have started you know a boutique not a physical high street store a boutique store uh, passionately growing on social media they have clients all over the world from us uk singapore london dubai nri clients looking for indian jewelry which they probably do not get easily in those countries they are reaching out to her she does not have a physical presence in all these countries able to sell so if you can mitigate that risk in uh, online you see 30 days free return uh, you know uh, no questions asked return policy right so right. i also offer you know consulting so one simple rule that i follow is uh, if you are not 100% satisfied 100% money is back no questions asked you just drop me an email i was not happy i'll refund the entire money not required yeah. simple f- philosophy and trust me 450 plus jewelers not a single rupee refunded till date it's a secret <laughs> it's not that you will have to refund if your intent is good if you really want them to be successful you don't have to refund but it just helps them break that barrier of you know risk right right thank you that that's really insightful actually deepa because uh, trust is something that uh, is a big factor especially in our field when you said that they can't really touch and feel a product and uh, in our field as image consultant we actually don't have a product it's completely service and there's no tangibility and there's no tangibility immediately like there are a lot of services where you would have tangibility in different forms but here the tangibility comes very late once you have really transformed an individual and i believe that's where the risk and the trust factor is really high however this particular strategy and that was also my second question to you that specifically if i have to because you are also a consultant so you would be able to relate with similar field as a image consultant and soft skills trainer that um, the whole idea about what is what are the different strategies so one you already mentioned that giving them or removing that factor or that barrier by giving their money back that could be one strategy of course but what are the other strategies that people can use especially in a feel where there's absolutely no tangibility they will see it later once the transformation has happened but initially there's nothing to show basically right so what are the strategies they can deploy um, to go over these two factors sure so i'll give from my own experience of uh, selling my consulting services so when i started in uh, 2020 uh, 
uh, I didn't intend to start as a consultant. It was, I love reading and writing. During COVID, everyone was sitting at home. So I started writing, you know, in my own blog. That's why My Wisdom Lane is the blog site. It was not a jewelry con consulting uh, website. And, uh, you know, there were jewelers who were uh, not able to sell because during COVID, all the stores were shut. And uh, I was heading jewelry category at eBay, 2,000 plus jewelers were exporting. So I had a good network. Some of them happened to reach out to me, hey, how do I sell online? Because stores are shut. Okay. What do I do? So they say every problem is a disguised opportunity. So that opportunity came to me. So I wrote an article on, you know, how big is the online jewelry market and what are the steps to sell online. It got carried by the National Jewelry Magazine, which published. And rest is history. So it happened and I became a jewelry consultant. I never intended to become a... <laughs> this, and this to be my... Accidental. <laughs> yeah, it was accidental, you can say. Accidental. Now the question is, sell. how do I, you know, sell? Sell uh, yeah, or promote. So Sorry. I would say, when I started, uh, I, I was uh, noticing all the slides that were showing, just pictures tell a thousand words, right? So it was not easy. Seven, eight months, I did free consulting. Zero cost. Because jewelers were asking, uh, how do I sell? I was teaching them, no money. Mm. So I was teaching all of them, no one was asking... You know, I, I also hesitated to sell, right? right? Selling is very difficult. It is. How do I sell? I, uh, you know, managed a 100 crore business and now I uh, don't know how to sell my service. So it was very difficult. The first person offered, say, I will not take your guidance unless you charge me something. I charge 1,000 rupees. So that was my first consulting, one hour, 1,000 rupees. <laughs> but that's how now I sell more than lakh rupee, uh, you know, uh, consulting uh, uh, projects. So, uh, the way it happened, there's a concept called value ladder. Hmm. So, value ladder is you work with clients initially who don't know you and who don't trust you. So, no, uh, they don't know you, they don't trust you. So, what you do is lowest uh, value and the lowest cost or the lowest price product, ideally free because there's no risk associated with it. They will trial you, they will try you. The idea is to make them try your service. And after trying, what you need is a testimonial or a review. Mm -hmm. That's what build trust. The moment you build trust, you increase your price. The more you build trust, the more you increase price. Slowly, slowly, you will see your value ladder. You have climbed all the steps. Very simple. Start as low as possible. Idea is not to sell cheap. Idea is to get clients test your service. Because we are our own bottleneck, right? Because if we price ourselves too high, we are not able to penetrate. Your price should be a reflection of the credibility that you have earned. Otherwise, you cannot demand the price. People should be willing to pay you that price because of the credibility. Absolutely. So I would say that value ladder concept worked for me. So initially, price low to get as many clients, then increase the price to reduce the number of clients. Work with only the best. Super. That, yeah. <laughs> yes, we, you can clap louder. <laughs> That's a brilliant strategy, actually, to start small and give people a teaser, taster, basically, if I have to put it in different words, a teaser of what you can offer, what is the value that you have, and let people taste that. And of course, once they have tasted the value, they would obviously would come back because they know that you have something that they need. And that's something that we need to make people realize. Uh, before we have one question, I have a, a humble request to the audience. If you can please put your phones on silent mode or uh, vibrate mode, that would be good for maximum great experience, right? We, you are trainers and image consultant. I don't have to tell you this by default, please. <laughs> okay. All right. Coming back. So um, that's a very good uh, strategy, uh, Deepak. And two things now that we talked about. One is the complete cash back, which is a very good strategy, I think, um, that if you're not satisfied, well, don't pay me. That's okay. I'll take, take your money back. But I take 100% I take advance also. <laughs> well, that's the strategy we follow too, 100%. Because, you know, you don't want to be doing full, uh, you know, uh, effort Absolutely. and then chasing for your own money. So that's Absolutely. a principle. So it's a three pre principle without the question I'll answer. Right. So first, uh, so that's it's a three, okay. <laughs> so three P. First is price. I don't negotiate. Lovely. Second is proposal. I don't write. Superb. There's no proposal. It's a standard product. I don't uh, write. And uh, third is promise. Mm. If you're not satisfied, 100% money back. The fourth P I'm about to add is punctuality. If you don't show up at, uh, on time, money is gone. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to add this, huh? Punctuality, uh, definitely. And that's very similar to 
almost all the three Ps that we follow in our services and very helpful. One thing that I can't help notice, you said, Deepak, that you started as a growth consultant in 2020. And that's when you charged 1,000 rupees. And now you charge 1 lakh rupees for your consulting. Do you understand, everyone? You're understanding the trajectory. <laughs> the idea is to follow through. Start, of course, you will be starting with that 1,000, but four years, we are sitting in 2024, and 1 lakh rupees and above for consulting, that's where everyone can be. You need to basically show your value. Wonderful, I think that's really wonderful thing. Um, in your uh, profile I was going through, there was something which caught my attention, which where you have written, there's a word called omni-channel. And I want to understand from you, and of course for our audience also, what is omni-channel and how does it work in consulting? So omni-channel in simple terms is being where your customer is. For example, earlier, uh, if you're doing only e-commerce, you're only selling online, but people want to touch and feel. You're not present there. So uh, they say omni-channel is an experience multiplier, not just a business multiplier. Because you cannot deliver the experience only in one channel. So be where the customer is. And uh, for high-value product, we have seen people may discover you online. They evaluate, they like. And if you're selling one rupee online, if you have a physical store, you can sell uh, sell six rupees online. The biggest example is Carrot Lane, which, uh, which is the number one online jewelry retailer in India, started purely online, but now 70% of sale is through offline. Hmm. They realized this, a lot of people were clicking on the ads, but not buying. Not buying. Just because only 16% people in India buy online, rest are browsing. So how do you encash them? You let them uh, have convenience of choice if they want physical store, they do home selling also. You know, whichever medium people are comfortable, you have to be present where your customers are. Right. If they want, they are in the malls, they, uh, they want you to be there in a high street or even exhibitions in their society, they do that as well. So be where your customers are, give them choice. Yeah, that's very similar to our personal shopping services, right? That where you, you basically, even we do this, that we browse for our looks for our clients online and then actually take them to a store. We don't buy them unless somebody insists and they are in a different city altogether. So wonderful, be aware where your customer is. And in high net worth individual, the idea is also to bring the store to their doorstep, right? So wonderful, that's, that's a great example. Any final advice before I take questions from the audience? Any final advice? Because all of us here are image consultants, soft skills trainer, working as a solopreneur. So uh, what advice would you like to give to them? It's a, a simple one line. Believe you can and you are halfway there. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll take a couple of questions from the audience for uh, Deepak. If anyone would like to, yes, right there, Prachi. Yes, uh, so you mentioned that you would like proposals. Can you elaborate on that? See, what happened is initially I wrote a lot of proposals. Mm -hmm. So people take proposal and you tend to convince the client. You give a lot of content. In fact, you give the solution. They will never come back. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot, lot of companies, you know, they will actually take proposals to learn. Yes. So I, I've realized I've wasted a lot of time writing proposals. And I do write proposals for existing clients. Right. Yeah. That's a good example because uh, I know I was talking to a few of the, uh, you know, alumni's uh, proposal, right? And I had speci uh, specifically said that don't put that much content. Let something be there for, you know, conversation. And that is true. A lot of people just take proposals understand and the big companies kind of take your <laughs> ideas and execute it. And they try so, to do it themselves. There's absolutely. nothing wrong in it. Yes. But I said it's all there in my LinkedIn. I keep writing. Yes. Why <laughs> make me write again? <laughs> Brilliant, I think. That's uh, okay. We'll take the next question. Yes. Yeah. When people see ads, we are reinforced that's a good company. It's definitely, I, I won't see that value of advertising still gone. Yeah. So good question. I would not say one should not advertise at all. But uh, what I meant is... Because the biggest platform, which is Tanish, uh, the, uh, they have advertised big brands. Without yes, that, yes. I don't think they, I would have done online. Completely agree with you. So what I meant was when you start, 
don't start with advertisement. For example, it's been fourth year. It's a zero ad business ad built, 450 customers, not a single ad, not a single cold call. All of them came because of what I wrote. But I am in a threshold where I can see that I cannot uh, scale it without advertisement anymore. So now even I am planning to start with advertisement. The point I was trying to make is if you are not generating business organically hmm. without advertisement, no matter how much ad you do, you will never make profit. You will sell, you will never make profit. Because ad start to amplify what is good. Mm. But if you are not able to sell without advertisement, the fundamentally the product or the service is not good. It should sell by itself. So there's a great quote that, uh, uh, that I read. It says, if you are selling, you failed in marketing. Marketing something which brings you inbound leads and inquiries. So if you are selling, you failed in marketing. And if you are marketing, you failed in product. But it doesn't mean that you should not market and do not sell. First, get the product right. If the product is fundamentally good, you will spend less on marketing and less effort on sales. Otherwise, a lot of jewelers are, you know, incentivizing their staff to sell. They stop the incentive, sales go down. Then you are dependent only on the sales staff to, you know, do hard sell. If your product is great, you will incentivize, but you are not dependent on sale or advertisement so much. The moment you stop advertisement, sales will fall. So advertisement is good, but once your product is good, otherwise what ads do is they only make your cracks more visible. If I may add to that, so even um, and a lot of you who have attended Business Smart, of course know. So when we um, start also, and for everyone we advise, that start with your network, your friends and family, your immediate network. Open your phone book, your clients are sitting right there. And the good thing is that you know them. So even the room for making errors, even if you make errors, the level of people kind of rejecting or people getting dissatisfied, you always have a chance to go back and get second chances because these people know, they know that you have just started. The level of basically tolerance is going to be a little bit higher in that case. And once you know, you will also get very honest feedback from them because these are your friends and family. They will tell you what is working, what is not working. You'll get honest feedback. So that's why we have in the beginning when I talked about market test, do a pilot version of it. So this is where you are working more on the product and just improvising it and making it solid. Uh, I remember in our very initial days in the first one, one and a half year, all of you who are in the first five, ten batches, I used to get and Ashwin used to get this very often that uh, we don't advertise enough. <laughs> Right? A lot of people would say that, come back and say, oh, we find everyone else, but we don't find you. And uh, because of our research, we stumbled upon you. And the reason, just the sheer reason for that was we wanted to ensure that we are really doing the best offering, the best learning, getting feedback and improvising. So just to add on to what you just said, that ideally you want to start first and see within your friends, family, your pool of people who trust you, the tolerance is high, Try it out, see your launch your product, get feedback, improvise it, and go to the market aggressively to scale when you have really made your product very well. So just to add a few more words. Does that help? Yeah. yeah <laughs> Super. <Thanks. laughs> All right. We'll take one last question from Henny. Yeah. Hello, yes, sir. Please. Hi. Uh, so you said that now you charge one lakh, and the journey started from 1,000. Of course, you knew that you are worth that one lakh. But what was that internal push when you realized that uh, instead of one now, I should ask for 50? That internal push, like where you are convinced that abhi mein maang sakta hu itna. So, very good question. So, make, makes me think. Thank you. <laughs> so, dekho, maangna to dasa chata hu. So, I am thinking what is stopping me from asking that? But uh, again, a price is a component of the value that you're delivering. So initially, let's say client was a very small jewelry store owner. Even if I give him a lot of wisdom and knowledge and help, he's not realizing that much benefit. But now my clients are minimum 100 crore and above. So if the same knowledge, when they apply, they're making much more delta. So basically you look at how much value you are creating and accordingly there's no shame in asking a slice of that. Understood. Okay. Thank you. Superb. Thank you so much Deepak. What a wonderful conversation this was and uh, really glad to have you with us. Let's give a round of applause please.